about the recording in just a second, if that's all right. Okay, yes. So, do you want to switch on? Yeah. Yes, we're on okay. that. Right, thanks for coming, everyone. Welcome. Um, this is our second attempt at an online meeting for the whole area that we represent. Um, I think we know probably quite a lot of people on the call. So I'm Marge Bridal, one of your local councillors, along with my colleague. Hi, I'm John Cotton. OK, so the two of us are here. Um, we've also got some council officers helping us tonight, Beverly Ed Mead and Pat White, who are in the background. Um, the first thing we have to do is to advise you that the meeting is being recorded um, and that it will be available via the council's website uh, on YouTube. So all you have to do is go on www.birmingham.gov.uk and um, you will be able to find the YouTube version a few days later of our meeting. So um, the next thing to explain is just what's on our agenda. So we've got a bit of an update on, dare I say it, COVID-19. Um, from our uh, public health assistant directors. Um, that's Dr. Marion Gibbon and Dr. Dinah Ahin Tankeran. We've also got the police. Um, we've got PC Catherine Boriston from our local police station. Uh, and she's going to give us an update on latest policing issues. Um, and we've also got an item on the Commonwealth Games, uh, which is to do with some money for communities that we want to um, ask your, for your thoughts about. Um, and then we've got a few updates from myself and John and also from some of our local residence groups. So we'll have to keep things moving, but that's what we'd, um, we'd like to go through. Can I just explain to everyone if you want to ask a question, um, if you go to the top bar on your computer, or I'm not sure how it works on a phone, you will find in the third um, graphic along that there is a, a thing that looks like a hand. And if you click on the yellow hand that comes up, that means that you are indicating you'd like to ask a question. But you can also use the chat um, uh, graphic. That is the second graphic along um, and that looks like a sort of speech bubble thing and you can write in the chat if you've got a question as well if you don't want to speak. So that's how it works and um, I think everyone's been very good actually and keep your camera off and your microphone off because I think that helps with um, the sound quality and make sure we don't get all get cut off. So without more ado then, um, we'll go on to our first item, which is Dr. Marion Gibbon from Birmingham's Public Health Section. And Marion is going to give us a bit of an update on COVID-19 locally um, and hopefully give us all some hope. Right, um, Marion, over to you. Would you like to put your camera on and I'll put mine off for a minute? Or maybe I'll leave mine. I don't know whether we should leave ours on or not. What do you think, John? Perhaps we ought to switch them off while Marion's speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Marion. So if you can come in. Okay. Um, oh. Um, Marion, are you still with us? Uh, oh, dear. I'm not sure what's happened here. Um, ah, here's Marion. Marion, can you put your camera on and turn your mic on? Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. OK. Right. Would you like to okay. uh, address address us all? All right. Give us the latest. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. Lovely. Well, you'll be so pleased to hear that our case rate in Birmingham is now coming down and Across Birmingham, we've now got a case rate of approximately 27 cases per 100,000. And this is a significant decrease from our previous week, which was at um, uh, 100,000. So you can see that things are definitely improving. 
and our rolling case rate has also decreased as well. So we're no longer in the kind of um, upper echelons of being the highest of anything. So it's it's definitely a very much improved situation. The spread though is still happening through households, social and workplace interactions, and we're now beginning to see some spread in schools as well. And the but the good news is also around the hospital admissions has started to come down and, and the number of cases per day is, is between two and 10, which is a much better situation than it has been. Now, where Glebe Farm and Child Cross are at in all of this, um, the number of cases we're at is around eight reported cases. So it's, it's much, much better than it has been. Um, and our case rate is about 33 per, um, cases per 100,000 of a population. So um, there is a bit more to do in, in that regard, but it is, it is definitely a very much improved situation. Now, in terms of where the, we are in, um, in this area, in terms of our vaccination data, um, this we're doing really well. Glebe Farm and Tal Cross is doing extremely well. The for over 80s, um, the Birmingham average is 89.5, and um, Glebe Farm and Tal Cross is 90.7. Um, and in all areas, um, with the exception of this of the um, the over 50. Between 50 and 55, we're basically doing better by a few um, percentage points than other areas. So I th I think um, you can really be proud of the fact that things that uh, the uptake of the vaccination program is really going well in um, Lee Farm and Tall Cross, and um, the case rates beginning to come down as well. In terms of the area that's mo the age range that's most affected it's in the um naught to um 19 age group um and that's where it's most significant um and we're still seeing that the high highest proportion of of cases are amongst the asian ethnic group um with 20 percent of all cases being in that group um and um, so, um, and with it, and also the white ethnic group is also quite high too. So those are the kind of two areas. Um, and I think um, I'm just going to see how how many COVID champions have you got? There's five COVID champions in this area, and so it would be great to get a few more if we can um, as well to try and um, share those messages. Um, get the news out to to others across the ward. Um, the COVID champions get information on a really regular basis about what the case rates are, how um, the, the vaccination program is going, and all of that sort of information. So um, it's it's definitely a very interesting and um, useful um, to be part of that um, initiative. Um, so that's basically what I have to say to, for you um, today. So it's you'll be glad to know. And I, I noticed that people are saying at last we've got some good news. So um, any questions? Thank you, um, Marion. That's really helpful. Yes, somebody's got a question here and says, how do we volunteer um, to be a COVID champion? Can you just explain that, what you have to do, what, what, um, what a resident would need to do? Sorry, Marion, did you hear that? Um, so the question is, a resident's asking, how do you volunteer to be a COVID-19 champion? I'm not sure what to do here, everybody. <laughs> um, oh. Marion, are you still there? Oh. Oh dear. What, what? I'm not sure whether Dinah might be able to. Yes. Dinah, I can't you? hear if, 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 if there's a. Oh, Dinah, are you still there? 
we've obviously got to, we've obviously got technical problems here um okay um there is a on the website on the council website there is um oh dear do, I, yeah, do John. Put the link to how to yeah I've got a problem with my network quality has just gone down and I was going to put it in the chat <laughs> okay not to worry Marion because John um, being a good technical man he's put the link in the chat um so uh Marilyn you asked that question there's the link for you so if you click on that hopefully um or, or save it you know hopefully that will help you work out what to do all right. Or meanwhile, I mean, if, if anyone finds it easier to contact myself and John via email, you're very welcome to do that and we can pass your your name on. So I think most of you probably have our our email addresses. OK. Um, any more any more questions, everybody? That sounds really good news, doesn't it, John? Sounds like we're doing well on vaccinations. And we're doing quite well on reducing the numbers as well. So that's fantastic because um, I know that we have been quite high in the league table of areas across Birmingham at some stages. But that's really, really good news for us all. So it does give us some hope, doesn't it? Um, OK, Indeed. anybody, anybody else, any questions before we move on then to the police? No, I can't see anyone else with their hand up, I don't think. And no other questions in the chat unless I've missed it. All right. Well, thank you very much, um, Dr. Gibbon, Marion. And, and thank you, Dr. Dinah, as well, for coming. Um, is there anything, Dinah, that you want to add or do you think it's been said by Marion? I think it's been said. It's been said. OK, right. Thanks very much then. Thank you for coming to our meeting. Just, just to add, I think I might just add that although um, it's 30, about 30% 30 of the cases are in children, zero to nine, there's also about similar number sort of around that, that in the 30, uh, 30s to 40s group, the 20s to 40s, sorry. So that's also another group to, that still has quite a number of cases. The younger age groups, as it were. So it goes all the way up to the 40. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yes. I suppose it will help, won't it, when people can get their vaccination? That surely will help, hopefully. Yes. Okay, thank you very much then. Thanks for that information. Um, I think we'll move on then because um, I can't see any more questions. So thank you both for coming. And um, if we could then move on to number three on our list of things. And if I could bring in PC Catherine Forreston, our police officer, uh, and Catherine, if you could put your camera on, I think that'd be nice that everyone could see you if that's all right. If you've got a camera, thank you. And do you want to give your report? And um, if anyone's got questions for Catherine, get them ready. OK, thanks, Catherine. You'll yeah. have to explain because um, obviously we cover part of your area but we also cover bits of the other other areas, don't we, as well, with different police sergeants. But if you can explain that, um, that would be helpful. All right, thanks. Yes, absolutely. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me OK? Yes. Fantastic, yes. thank you. Uh, yeah, so firstly, um, the apologies of Sergeant Matt Goldsmith and uh, Sergeant Orla Jenkins, who covered the Shard End. Uh, policing area they can't make it today so they've sent myself to speak to you so if there's any questions I can't answer I'm, I will note them down and I will make sure that that they get those questions and I can get answers for you before the next meeting um, so yeah in terms of the different policing areas I know that the council boundaries are slightly different to ours so in terms of the Shard End policing team we cover um, in broad uh, we cover Shard End which includes kind of the Heathway uh, the main bit of Shard End around where the police station is uh, we cover a little bit of Tile Cross, so we, we do cover the shops at Bow Lane um, and we do cover a, a large area leading up to the village of Tile Cross, but not all of it. I believe some of that will be covered by the Stetchford policing team uh, and we obviously also cover uh, Lee Village uh, and kind of Macadown Lane area around the Lidl. Um, if you have a question that doesn't relate to the policing area that we cover, 
then I'll make sure that that is sent to the uh, the policing team that do cover it. So don't worry about that. Um, ask me, and if I can't answer, I will wait. Make sure it's forwarded to the people who can. So the first thing then that the sergeants would like me to say just on um, this month's roundup, um, I'll just go through it quite quickly because there's a fair bit. Uh, but if there's anything more specific you want to know about anything I'm saying, just either pop it in the chat or ask me at the end by raising your hand, virtual hand. So we've been really busy, obviously, over the last few weeks and last few months uh, since uh, my other sergeant would have spoken to you. Um, and we're very excited to see lockdown measures easing um, this week. Uh, we're happy to report that in Chardend we've had absolutely no issues at all with um, with any of our pubs or any of our open spaces. Um, however, we will continue to patrol those um, mainly on foot um, and we're doing a lot more foot patrol, particularly as the weather gets nicer. So if you see us out and about, please say hi. We always appreciate um, some friendliness when we're out and about. Um, so we're going to be hoping to run community engagement sessions again. So all of our pop-up surgeries, uh, our street watches and our speed watches, they're all going to be starting up again in the next coming coming weeks and months. Um, at the moment, um, the force's position on street watch specifically, I believe that this was asked about um, in the previous meeting, is that it should still only be in pairs. Obviously, given the risk and the fact that we really want to be supporting our street watch groups, um, we're not necessarily going to be supporting the full return of those at the moment. Um, but if you've got anyone who's eager to volunteer, um, send them to us, we'll sign people up. And as soon as we've got confirmation on exactly what the final plan is gonna be for the date that we can start them back up again, um, we will let everybody know. And we're, we're as eager as you are to start those. So we're hoping that isn't too far away. So in terms of the crime figures then, so we've got the final figures for the whole year. Um, and we've seen some really positive reductions in the main crime types, as we call them. So, you know, vehicle crime has been reduced by 40% in the last 12 months, which is obviously huge. Uh, robbery has come down by 25% and burglary and youth violence um, have come down by 12% across the ward as a whole. Obviously, that's fantastic. So, you know, thank you very much for everyone who's given us any, any information, who's reported anything uh, and been following any of the crime prevention advice we've been putting out. I think that's had a massive influence on figures. Um, we obviously appreciate that potentially lockdown has had an impact on them as well. So we are going to be monitoring them um, over the next few months, the coming months and the coming year, just to make sure that as those crime types return to normal, we're still staying on top of it uh, and we're making sure we're, we're more visible out and about as, as your neighbourhood team. Unfortunately, previous newsletters, I believe, and previous updates from, um, from the team have said we are seeing rises in domestic violence and knife crime figures. So those are in line with national trends. So I don't think it's anything specifically concerning to Shard End. Uh, but if anyone has any concerns or information, please do get in touch. In terms of our priorities moving forward, um, they remain the same. So that's COVID-19 and community safety. Um, in terms of a neighbourhood team, what we're doing, um, you know, to be proactive about those is basically a lot of high visibility, high visibility patrols um, and uh, general responding. If we get any, um, you know, breaches reported to us by members of the public, we're turning out to those when, when we can uh, and just being make, making sure we're responding in quick time. Tackling domestic violence and reducing youth violence. So as a team, we support these on a daily basis um, whilst working within our community. So whether that's responding to calls to service from, from you, from the public, or whether that's by longer term uh, offender management. So targeting people that are really hurting our communities and causing problems, um, or by looking at more civil interventions and longer term problem solving uh, with, with various um, groups. We've set three local priorities for the coming months uh, based off basically what we've asked people on social media and in meetings. And the three that we've come up with have been vehicle crime, road safety. So that includes um, off-road motorbikes, um, speeding and parking. And the third one being drug use and drug dealing. Um, that seems to have come back from feedback from the community as the issues that people um, most are worried about and can see most visible in our community. Um, and antisocial behaviour, which we get a lot of reports of, basically feed into all three of those things. Um, so in order to get to work on those, if you've got any specific locations and times, um, pop them in the chat or, or drop us an email and, and we'll add them to the list. Um, and we'll obviously keep you updated uh, as we go forward about how we're getting on with that. 
Uh, we've had some good news as well over the last few months to share. So we've got two new police officers who've joined the team, uh, PC Sam Preston and PC um, James Paul. They've both settled in really well. They're getting to know the area. They are both student officers, so they're very young in service. However, they are being really proactive. Uh, we're making sure we're guiding them and teaching them all we know about Chardend and the area. Um, Sam has managed to uh, seize an off-road uh, motorbike and several stolen motorbikes in the last few weeks, so already having a massive impact on the area. Um, and they've been getting to know the schools as well uh, by doing some school patrols and liaising with the, the schools as they return as well. Um, so their faces are well and truly out, so if you see them and you're not sure who they are, if you've not seen them as officers before, it will be our new staff, so be friendly to them. Uh, we're very grateful for the help, support and feedback that we've been given by uh, various groups and community groups that have um, that have sprung up across our area and continue to work throughout the pandemic. So thank you very much to anyone that's involved in any of those that might be in um, might be in this meeting. Um, thank you for everything you do, um, and it's really great that hopefully now as restrictions ease, uh, we'll be able to help you more and um, get involved with as much as we can. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Um, obviously, there's a couple of more good news stories um, around uh, a load of warrants we've been executing over the last couple of weeks. So the team did a cannabis factory warrant uh, two days ago where we seized a number of cannabis plants. Um, and as a result of that, on the back of that, we're, we're probably going to be executing a few more in the coming months. So if anyone has any more information, obviously, around drug use, drug taking or drug dealing, as usual, get in touch with us um, and we remain proactive in, in dealing with things as quickly as we can, uh, even during COVID, where it becomes slightly harder to, to speak to people. But thank you very much for all your information uh, and any areas of concern I will pass on uh, to, to the two sergeants when they return to work. Thank you. Um, there are some questions here. Um, I think basically probably everybody in the meeting would agree that um, speeding and off-road vehicles speeding around the roads is a big issue in the area, but you've obviously picked that up as one of your priorities. So I think, you know, definitely John and I have had lots of complaints about that of, over the last uh, few months. Um, I think it would be helpful, Catherine, if you could, could you put the police email address? Are you able to put that in the chat before you go? so that people have got a, an address that they can send problems through to. I think it's always helpful to have that email address. And if it's not, if it's like for the Stetchford area or the Ward End bit that we cover, then hopefully it will get passed on to the relevant team. So that was that. Now, somebody, Marilyn and Teresa, are both um, asking about whether you have any powers over fly tipping um, I don't know what the answer to that is. I know that the council um, are doing what they can. Um, perhaps I could just say to Teresa, who's asked about fly tipping at the back of um, a place down, I think it's Bell Lane. Uh, I know that has definitely been reported and was being looked into. Actually, I think the police Catherine, were looking into that location. Um, so it's a location down Bell Lane near the Bell Lane shops, and at the back of that, it looked like there was some fly tipping, possibly by the business who operate from um, down there. So I think that was forwarded to the police. I don't know whether you could look into that again, could you? And see Teresa's comment in the chat there. Um, Teresa, do you want to come in and just explain? What the place is called Barry, is it? Yeah, that's correct. Sorry, I was just typing into the chat then. You caught me out. Sorry. Yeah, so, so at the last um, meeting that we had um, that Sergeant Goldsmith attended, when we when we brought this subject up, he said that the very next day he was going to send some of his um, local PCs out to have a look. Um, I've actually chased on email a couple of times and obviously I've got residents who, who originally raised the subject um, chasing me for an update and I'm not getting any feedback so if we can sort of highlight that and just feedback because it isn't getting any better it's only getting worse. We think yeah. it's being created by the business don't we Teresa I think that was what we, we suspected. Yeah looking at the items that have been thrown over the fence it does look like it's the local businesses that are, that are causing it. Yeah 
Yeah. So, sorry, just cutting in. Um, we did, we, we did, we were sent out the next day. So I was one of the officers that was sent to Risa. So I did go. I did have a look. I agree with you. I think I think the fly tipping is being caused by the businesses. Um, to that end, I did I did contact the businesses themselves, and I raised that as a problem. Obviously, as you can imagine, the businesses were adamant that they themselves had nothing to do with it, that it wasn't connected to them, um, and they basically denied all knowledge. However, I did obviously say that due to the items, the you know the kind of items that were put there, you know, we're talking things like well, I mean, you've been there and you've seen it yourself. I, I think that you know trying to deny that it's the businesses who are causing it is a bit rubbish, if I'm honest. Pardon the pun. Um, so basically what we're doing at the minute is we're speaking with the businesses themselves uh, more. We're getting our design out crime team to have a look at the area because it's not just fly tipping that's a problem there. I don't know if people are aware of kids that have been climbing all over the back of the fences to the rear of those shops as well. Um, but we know, we know that there's ongoing issues there. And what our design out crime team are looking to do is can we work with, with the council or with any other... Um, relations to make the area less appealing for fly tipping and the kids causing ASB as well so I'm sorry it's not a quick process um, but we are on top of it if we go and we see any rubbish we report it on fix my street um, and I'm sure residents continue to do that as well so we are aware of it we are doing stuff about it and I'm sorry that your emails have gone unanswered um, I'll raise that with Sergeant Goldsmith to make sure that you get a reply because I appreciate that you're you're getting asked basically by residents what's going on with, with, with the location okay as as the businesses are, are now aware um whether they deny it or not now that they're aware that they are under the spotlight what can we do now to get the fly tipping cleared in the hope that they will no, no longer continue at the moment if they if they carry on adding to it nobody will notice whereas if the area is cleared it will become more obvious that it's still happening yeah, um, I think that might be a question for the councillors. How do you go about removing that rubbish? Yeah, um, I mean, I think I'm sure I reported it to the council, but I checked. Uh, and I think the starting point was yourselves, the police. Um, but John and I, if maybe together, John, we could report um, this to the council for the fly tipping section and see if we can get some action. So we will promise to do that, Teresa. OK, and you'll have to let me know and John know if nothing happens. But if we both put our muscle behind it, we'll do our best to get it cleared. And then the business needs to be cracked down on, doesn't it, really? So yeah. I, I we'll do that. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Can I bring in somebody else? I think uh, Brian. Brian, Brian, you wanted to ask a question. You put your hand up. Or you, yes. Uh, no, it's, that's it. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's far away. I know it's early days, but are the police doing any um, monitoring of the new road sign that we've put in uh, Hayward Road or um, St Giles Road? Yes, that's Catherine. It's a new sign. Um, Brian and the Tarcross residents group that Teresa heads up were instrumental in getting that um, slow down sign put into St Giles Road, um, close to uh, Braymore Road, isn't it? Close to Braymore Road Junction. So I think it would be great, yes, if you could keep your eye. That St Giles Road is a long straight road. And as with Folliot Road, for example, in Lee Village, you get a lot of speeding down there. Um, we certainly, John and I, witnessed it a lot of times. So could you keep your eye on that for us, Catherine, that sort of road, and um, see if the sign is having some effect? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we will add it to the list. So we, we do regular speeding operations outside of Speedwatch. Um, our last one, admittedly, was a few weeks ago. Um, but I'll make sure that, that we pay particular attention to St Giles at Braymore, kind of that top end no, of the Cross Road. No, it's actually St Giles Stroke Haywood Road. It's a bit further back from... Um... OK. Yep. So it's at that junction, yes. It's on St yep. Giles Road, but it's near the junction of Haywood Road. Absolutely. Um, once we've conducted anything there, we tend to post any kind of results from all of our speeding operations and indeed anything we really do on our Twitter. 
So if anyone here has access to it, um, keep your eyes on it and I'll make sure if w w when we go there, um, we'll put an update on, on if we catch anyone speeding and, and the results of that. Okay. Um, just coming back to fly tipping, um, before I lose that, Marilyn had asked about that as well. I mean, the thing to do, um, everybody, is to report fly tipping, isn't it, John? And I think Pat's tried to be helpful in the chat to say, you know, contact um, environmental services in the council, go on the council website or ring the council number, which is 0121 303 1112. That's the call centre and just report it, keep reporting it, or use Fix My Street, as I think you've said, Catherine, haven't you? Because that does get picked up by the council as well. And then if all else fails, you'll have to let John and I know, and we'll do our best to use our councillor muscle to get it cleared. But it's a massive problem in the city. It seems to got worse, doesn't it, John, over the last year? Um, and it is just a tremendous problem. I mean, to be fair, the council are introducing some new methods, um, which I hope means that there's going to be more cracking down on the fly tippers. So, for example, on the council's website, you'll be able to see a video uh, where cameras have been placed of people who are dumping rubbish. And you'll be invited to say, do you know this person? And to basically shock them to the council. That's being done in other council areas, and we're going to start doing that in Birmingham as well to shame these people. It's called a wall of shame. So you'll have to look out for when that starts. Okay. Um, right. Any other? Oh, youth service provision. Marilyn, you were asking about that. I don't know whether PC Borison, you won't <laughs> have an answer to that, will you? I don't suppose. Well, um, the, only, the only thing I would say is that we have some fantastic um, youth organisations in Child End. You know, if you if you think of just Lee Village, we've obviously got the Pump, which is uh, an amazing facility. Uh, and it actually serves, you know, a, a much wider community than just Shard End and Tile Cross. We've got, you know, in Shard End, we've got the Shard End Community Centre and we've got a whole raft of different little organisations that do support um, youth services. Uh, I wasn't aware of how many there were until very recently when we started getting in contact with them. I agree there can never be enough, um, but we, we do have them. They exist um, and we're doing a lot more work with schools just to make people aware that they exist and how you can refer young people to them. Um, but yeah, I agree, you know, there can never be enough, um, never enough. I think the, the place for our area is the pump in Lee Village and that does have youth programmes. But of course, it's been closed for the last year, like everything else, because of what we've all been through. So let's hope um, we can get going on that again um, sooner rather than later. OK, anyone else for Catherine? I'm just taking people basically who are from our area, but um, uh, is there anyone else that I've missed? Um, Donald's got his hand up. Who? Donald, yes. I think, Donald, you're from the Shard End bit, aren't you? But um, do you want to ask a quick question, Donald? Oh, hello. Yes. Hello, um, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I know I'm not from your area, but... Um, That's all right. Uh, I'm very disappointed on Saturday, you know, about Prince Philip when he died, that that um, the local police station wasn't raising their flag and, and putting it at half mast in respect. So Monday morning, I went to the police station around the back, and there's uh, four police persons around the back there. I raised the issue about the uh, getting the flag to be risen, uh, put up because. And, and I was told that I hadn't got one. And I eventually noticed that tomorrow, uh, yesterday that is, uh, that a flag has actually been put up, but it's not the Union Jack. It's the the police flag. But at least they have got, got some sort of flag up eventually. Yeah, Donald, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I was on duty that day. It was my colleagues you spoke to. First of all, I apologise for that. Um, it wasn't that we didn't have a flag. Um, it was that the flagpole itself was broken. Um, we raised that with our maintenance department as soon as we we record, as soon as we realised that, um, and they've come out and they fixed it. Hence why the flag is now up. 
Uh, we don't have a Union Jack flag um, that is in a, in a fit state to raise, so we do have one, but it's very tattered. So we decided out of respect rather than fly something that is, um, well, a, a disgrace, quite frankly. We, we put the false flag at half mast um, out of a sign of respect. So thank you for raising that with us. We weren't actually aware that the, the flagpole was broken until you raised it with us, uh, but we've done what we can to fix that. So hopefully we, we've come to some kind of... Um, some kind of solution with that. So, so thank you, thank you for raising it, and uh, we've done what we can with it. Yeah. Now, also, it's the the Queen's real birthday, I believe, on the twenty first of April, which is next week. I think that's the um, Wednesday. Uh, so, wouldn't it be a good idea if you could have the actual Union Jack flag uh, for for, for commemorate uh, for mar marking the Queen's real birthday? Yep, so we've raised it with the force on whether they can supply us with one in time. Um, I think at the minute everyone's trying to buy a Union Jack flag. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of important things going on at the moment. Um, if we get one, we will put it up. If not, it'll have to just be the um, the police, um, the West Midlands police flag. Um, it doesn't mean we don't respect, obviously, the occasion. Um, it's just what we've got, I'm afraid. But yeah, no, I do agree. If, if, it, if we can get a Union Jack flag, we'll, we'll make sure it's flying. Yes, all right. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah, and thank you for answering as best you can. Um, could I just remind you, um, Catherine, would you mind putting the Chardin police address, the email address, in the chat? Um, I don't know whether you can stay till the end of the meeting. You're very welcome. Um, but if you've got to go, we'll understand. Have I missed anybody? I hope I haven't. I think, oh, you've put it in. Wonderful. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right, thanks for coming and thanks for your update. Uh, and um, that that's just, you know, really, really helpful. Um, yeah, so no, thank I, you. I can, I can say till the end of the meeting, if anyone else has any other questions, yeah, they, they they do do I'll, um, I'll answer them at the end if they stick them in the chat. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Right, um, moving on then to the next thing, everyone, which um, we need your help with, all of you, really. Um, and that is um, the Commonwealth Games Celebrating Communities Grant. Um, I'm just going to run through and Beverly, can you share the screen um, and put up and I can speak to it as we go through. Um, we're getting some money, everybody, which will cover the whole of our area. So um, that's Lee Village, Kitts Green, Tile Cross, um, Stetchford and Glebe Farm, and also uh, a bit into Ward End. This money um, is coming and it's called a Celebrating Communities Grant. Uh, and um, we're getting it, uh, well, we've basically, it's become live now. So I just want to explain what it's all about. Right. Um, what we need are your ideas. So while I'm going through this quickly, will you try and have a think about any ideas that you can come up with which fit into what we're supposed to be using this money for? So I'll just explain a bit more. Right, next slide then, Beverly, please. Thank you. Yep, second slide, that's it. Oh, no, no, the next one. That's it, that one. Um, so what is the Celebrating Communities Small Grants Fund? Basically, um, we're getting £35,000 to cover the whole of our area, and it's to be used both this year and next year. Um, it's for community groups to work together, so people working together. And um, there are the themes at the bottom of this um, slide. I don't know whether my pointer is pointing to them. Get active, ready, steady, fun, and celebrating culture. All right, next slide, Beverly. Okay, the first one then, get active. That's the first theme. And that's all about um, residents getting active, as it says. So things to do with improving your health and well-being by kind of doing walking or cycling um, or community games and sports days. Um, and what's called at the bottom there, active streets and parks. So this is, for example, where if you have got a couple of streets um, and you live in one of them and you know some of your neighbours, 
you could actually get the street closed off from traffic with a bit of effort and have a street party. So that's one idea, um, you know, that you could do. Um, similarly, in a park, and the, we've got a lot of open spaces in our area. So like down in Lee Village or at Tar Cross or up at Glebe Farm um, Park, we could have um, a party in the park. And um, so, you know, that's another idea. OK, next slide, Dudley. Ready, steady, fun um, is sort of similar. So, but it also includes things like coming up with a, um, greening up your area, maybe planting some Commonwealth themed flower displays, um, displaying some flags, uh, cleaning up the streets. So going out on a community litter pick um, with the right equipment provided by the council. Um, and then celebrating communities and having fun. So that's about street parties and picnics, which we've already mentioned. And the last theme is called celebrating culture. And this is like um, about celebrating the idea that we've got pride in being British, pride in the Commonwealth countries that make up the Commonwealth. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people in the city that um, may have that kind of heritage. And um, it's about um, celebrating, you know, all those um, different uh, cultures and communities. And we can tap into another bit of money that's at the bottom there called creative, um, called, um, uh, it's a cultural program. Um, and we could apply for that in addition to the money that we're getting ourselves. Next slide, Beverly. Keep going. Okay. That's it. So um, we as your councillors um, obviously want to work with you residents across the area. Um, we've, we've already got a kind of bit of a plan for our area, for the ward. You have to have that. Um, and um, so we're here basically to help pull it together. Next slide, Beverly. Next slide. Uh, next one. That's it. How will successful applications be decided? Right. And what I wanted to draw your attention to here was about the fourth bullet point down there, where projects can be between £100 and £1,000, or £1,001 to £5,000, or £5,001 to £10,000. So you can have a little bit of money, or you can have a slightly bigger bit of money, or a quite a big bit of money to do what you want to do. And um, we've got to spend the money between, partly between this year and next year, leading up to the Commonwealth Games. Next slide, Beverly. So the way it's going to work is that we've got to come up with our ideas, we've got to package them up, and we've got to fill in application forms. So that's down the bottom there, that's it on the left. And um, this has to be done through com existing community groups. Now, we're lucky. We've got quite a lot of residence groups in our area. And somehow we're going to have to pull the ideas together from everybody. doesn't matter if you haven't got a residence group. But if you've got an idea um, and maybe you let John and I know about the idea um, and then we can somehow pull it together and apply through our residence groups. That's what we've got to do. Then the council, once we submit the applications, um, they have a look at what we've come up with. Anything that they don't think kind of qualifies, they'd return to us, but they'd say, look, work on it a bit more. Uh, and then um, they kind of approve the proposals. And then the next slide, Beverly, please. So the way it goes in terms of timetable is that in March this year, the fund was launched. Um, this is April, and John and I said we'd hold this ward meeting so that, you know, we could give you the information and you could start thinking quickly about what you in your community or your street might like to do. Um, next month, then May, we've got the month of May to come up with the applications and they need to be then submitted 
via our residence groups um, and we need to submit them then to the council in at the beginning, 1st of June, that's our deadline for the first round. And then after the 1st of June, the council have a look at them all and then um, they will then approve the ones that they think qualify. Hopefully it'll be all of them. They approve those in July and then come September, we have to have another meeting like this whereby the ideas are put to a meeting of everybody and we can just, you know, agree them as a, a team of people living locally. And then the events can start at the beginning of October. And then the last slide, um, I think, really, that we need to look at is then there's a round two and it starts all over again. And so come October, we have to start thinking about the next, how we're going to spend the next bit of money. And then we have to submit by beginning of January next year, the next lot of applications, have a ward meeting like this in February to get them approved. And then in March um, or in April next year, the last few projects can commence. So that's how it all works. So what we need from everybody our ideas. Um, the fact that you've come to this meeting is really encouraging and hopefully this will get you thinking about what you could do locally so that we can really make use of this money uh, and bring people together. It's about connecting people, connecting communities. So we need ideas. So I hope I've made that as clear as I can. Thanks Beverly, we can get rid of that now I think. Um, and we can go back to seeing if anyone's got anything that they've already thought of um, ideas. So does anybody, I, don't, I haven't managed to see the chat as I've been doing all of that. John, has anybody come up with anything they want to tell us? <laughs> I'll ask my colleague. Council Brian, there's a couple of questions, hands up. Um, Brian's got his hand up and so has Matt. And, and Karen, has she got a hand? Oh no, Karen's got a thumb up. Natalie was asking in the, the chat about whether the slides would be, be circulated and Beverly's just confirmed that we'll get them sent out after the meeting so uh, people can have a look through them at the leisure as well. OK, that's great. Anything else in the chat, John, that I need to pick up? Uh, no, not at this point, but uh, I'll, I'll keep my eye out. All right. And then somebody else had their hand up. Who was that? Uh, did you say someone had a hand up? Um, Brian, oh, Matt, Matt, Matt is here. Yeah. Is it Matt? Yes, Brian and Matt have got their hand up. Uh, okay, Matt, let's take you first, because Brian's already spoken, and then let's take Brian. Uh, I just want to say, uh, Bridge. I, bridge? I'll quite, yeah, Bridge. I'll quite happily walk down to the park, over the bridge, to the pub. Do you remember okay. we discussed the pub over to the, uh, over to the pub in the meetings last year or the year before? Yes. Um, I don't know whether Catherine, um, who is from the... Do you live in the Glebe Farm area, Matt? Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. Catherine, do you want to just come in? And um, Catherine is the uh, chair of the Glebe Farm and Stetchford Residence Group. And um, there's been a lot of work that Catherine's put in on behalf of that group of people to try to get some um, funding to improve the re the um, park area in the Glebe area. Uh, do you want to say anything about the bridge idea, Catherine, very briefly, please? Uh, yes, I can do. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes, that's fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, so I have been told that certainly the council are considering um, a bridge. It's not completely off the um, <laughs> off the agenda, but it will require a significant amount of funding and the funding has not yet been sourced. Um, it, it would be included as part of a bigger um, plan to improve the recreation ground and also improve accessibility to the cycle path, the other side, and then as Matt has pointed out, onwards to the pub and Butlands End and Hodge Hill. Um, yes. <laughs> So it is definitely still something which there are conversations about, but I do think we might have to be quite patient as we wait for the bridge to come. I don't know whether the councillors have got anything else they would want to add to that. Um, 
it will require a huge amount of funding and as yet that has not been identified um, but yes. the conversation is ongoing thank you Catherine that's really helpful mm -hmm. but Matt you can tell that we're on to it um, it's a great idea and um, funnily enough um, Teresa who heads up the Tar Cross residence group we were out um, in her green space area the other day and we saw a small bridge that goes over a stream there and it didn't look like it was that much money. It didn't look like it had cost that much. But on the other hand, it was just a small stream that it goes over. And also it was probably created a long time ago. And the trouble is these days with health and safety, you probably have to make sure it was really, really safe, obviously. Uh, sorry, oh. can I just just step back in again? That Yes. The plan as well with respect to a bridge going across the River Cole from the recreation grounds to match up to the Raven, the tarmac path up to the Raven, is that there would be hard surface path um, to link up with it. So we'd be looking to put a hard surface path in the park as well as a bridge, which does increase the cost. And I think the intention is that the bridge should be um, cycle friendly um, whilst also being safe and hopefully not allowing too much by way of quad bikes and motorbikes um so we are looking for a, a very practical functional and uh, significant bridge i think so matt keep, keep watching this space and work with catherine and all of us and hopefully we will get there hope so um, yeah it might need a bit of a barrier as well so people don't go swimming after they've been to the pub <laughs> Yes, too right. <laughs> this is the, the Raven, is it still called the Raven pub, that pub? Is, is it? Yeah, I don't know it is. Okay, right. Um, Brian, you wanted to come back with a question. You stick your mic on. Far away, put your mic on, Brian. Is that better? That's it. Yeah, I think the whole thing is a great idea, and I think it will show the world that Birmingham uh, are doing a, a great job towards the Commonwealth. Um, but I think that we need it needs more publicity because I, I had heard something about it myself. But does it, you think it needs publicity, perhaps in the local newspapers? Yes. Well, Brian, maybe we could look to you to um, publicise it for us. Brian is a great letter writer to the Evening Mail. Um, and although not everybody reads the Evening Mail these days, but I mean, it's it's online as well, I think, isn't it? So, I mean, I just think it's worth a go, Brian, if you can construct one of your letters um, when you receive the presentation that Beverly is going to send through uh, and, you know, base it on what we've said today. Uh, yes, you certainly do that. I mean, obviously, um, these grants are going to be available throughout the whole of Birmingham for all the wards yeah. in the city. Yeah. So other councillors will be having these discussions with residents as well. Yeah. Yes, I'm, quite okay. happy to, I'm quite happy to come together, but I'd like you to uh, verify it first. Yes. OK, fine. No problem. Uh, OK, now, um, David has also mentioned... Uh, that in, if, if you know all of you, Lee Ford Road, which runs from Lee Village through to Shardend, it's that road there, um, there is a playing field that was uh, linked up to education at one stage, and that isn't being used at all at the moment, so it's a big green space. Um, we found out... Um, that a group, a football group, are taking an interest in that location. Um, I don't know whether any of you have heard of them. They're called SPG uh, and they're SPG Juniors, I think. Um, and they're currently in discussion with the council, with Birmingham Council, about possibly using that land to get football back on the field. Um, and I think they've got other ambitions as well. But obviously the other ambitions, which um, I think they said they were interested in trying to get a clubhouse built, that would need planning permission. And I think they're quite a long way from any of that. But it would be great to see that field being used. And maybe we can have some discussions with that football club, um, you know, and perhaps we could use that space, David, as you say. It's a good idea. 
Right. Um, any other questions from anybody about that money? John, can you come back in with me here? Because um, we're going to meet with um, all the residence groups. Uh, I think we're meeting next week, aren't we, um, online? And um, we could do with, you know, if any of you've got ideas that you would like to feed through to that meeting that we've got next week, it would be really helpful if you could email John and I your ideas with your name and address and contact details uh, and what your idea is. And then we could feed those ideas through to that meeting next week, if that's all right. Um, Putting our email addresses yeah, in the chat. Yeah, thanks, now. John. OK, that's great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just anything, really. So from, as I said, picking picnics in the park, um, closing a street off, um, if you've got a little bit of parkland near you having a, you know, yes, an event in the park. And the idea is that we would have the first lot of this stuff happening at the beginning of October, hoping that we're all over the worst of COVID and that we can all get together again. I'm not sure what will happen if we can't. But anyway, I don't think we want to think about that. So we just <laughs> assume that we're going, it's going to be a lot better by the autumn. OK, so all ideas welcome, uh, as somebody has put in the chat. Was that you, John? No. Me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you could all get your thinking caps on, because we want to make sure we spend the money. But don't forget, that we can spend part of it this year and part of it next year. So we've got two goes at it. All right. Um, right. Somebody else is saying something here. I'm planning on an online meeting. Oh, yes, that's right. Catherine's planning on getting her residence group together online. Uh, so Glee Farm and Stetford residents, which would, I think, include you, Marilyn. Um, we will be getting people together online. Uh, Catherine will to discuss this as well. I don't know whether, Teresa, you could do that as well with with some of your group or you're already talking to people I know. So um, that's how we can take things forward. Right. So thinking caps on and we haven't got much time for the first round. So we do need to get our ideas together over the next, I'd say, the next month, really, so that we can get the applications ready. And Pat is one of our assistant um, helpers with funding applications. So, Pat, I think you're coming to the meeting next week and we will probably need your help. Um, along with, I think James might be able to help as well, who's another council officer, um, to put applications together working with local residents. Right. Um, okay. Excellent. So, um, shall we leave that one at that? Um, so, thanks for that one. Next one, then, everybody, is um, yes, great, Pat, that you're coming to that meeting. Uh, an update from us. Um, I've already said about the Leaford Road playing field because I'd been asked about that by David. Uh, so we're looking more into that, David, and um, about the use of that field by the football club. And John and I have asked to have a, a meeting with the football club and with the council to get fully briefed so that we can report back more. Um, I just wanted to say as well, because somebody had raised the issue of Lloyd's Bank in Lee Village last time. Beverly Edmead, who's our um, who's our another helper on the call from the council, has tried to contact Lloyd's and has had great difficulty, haven't you, Beverly? Um, but we are going to persist, although I think, David, that Lloyd still seems to be operating um, the bank in Lee Village. So we just hope that that's going to keep going. But these banks are so difficult to get in touch with these days. Um, unless, as Beverly has said to me, you know, you've got an online bank account with them. It's really difficult to contact banks. So it's a bit of a, an issue, I think. But we won't. Um, if you still think, David, there's a problem, you might want to stick something in the chat there. Beverly and I and John can keep going on this to see if we can get a bit more information. Um, maybe John and I need to do a letter to the bank and see if we get a reply. Uh, we haven't tried that yet, but we will. 
um, that was that. And then uh, the other thing, um, very briefly, Laura. Is Laura here from Real Access? I don't know whether Laura's, I did send her the link, John, but yes, I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, she is. Good. <laughs> Laura, do you want to just briefly explain who you are and, um, you know, what the ideas are linked to the Commonwealth Games money? Yes. Sure. Very briefly. <laughs> yes, briefly. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm from Real Access and we're doing a feasibility study at the moment around arts and cultural activity kind of um, focus a little bit on the Glebe Farm Recreation Ground, um, but also then looking at how we might explore an arts trail um, across the ward. Um, we're working with the cultural commissioning team within the council, as well as the Hodge Hill Arts Forum and um, other partners. Um, we've, we've done a survey, so um, the more people that kind of contribute um, ideas via that survey, the better. Um, and that will inform kind of some of the development of the project, hopefully. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put that in the chat as well as my email address. And then if anyone wants to contact me either with questions or, or ideas, that would be great. Um, I've been working um, quite closely with Catherine um, Alvis up till now. So um, uh, she's another way of kind of getting hold of me. But um, um, yeah, it's linked to the Commonwealth Games development and um, the, the priority to try and get as much happening in local neighbourhoods as possible. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully that's brief enough. <laughs> Thank you. That's really helpful, Laura. Yeah. So everybody, ideas around art projects, you know, if you're creative, good at making things or um, have got a bit of an artistic sense then uh, I think uh, Laura is our lady to help. And maybe, you know, she can work um, across our ward if possible. So have a think about your ideas for the Commonwealth Games money and see if we might be able to link Laura and the arts team in with what you want to do. Um, and hopefully then we can keep Laura on board and, um, you know, use her expertise. OK, so that was that. Thank you, Laura. Thanks very much. And I think Laura's going to put something in the chat that might be useful. Yeah, Teresa's asking if we can have your details, Laura. So no doubt you'll stick those in the chat for us so that we've got them. All right. I'm conscious that Karen has asked about road resurfacing, John. <laughs> and I can understand why. Um, the latest from... Kia Highways are now the contractor that do the roadworks in Birmingham. They took over from Amy, uh, who were uh, charged with um, repairing the roads and pavements. There was a massive dispute, as probably most people know, with the council, between the council and Amy. That has now been sorted through a court case and Kia have taken over. And there is a list, I think, John, of roads, but I, I think that they were on the initial list, as I remember it, because I think they're about to point, a point, um, a major, another major contractor, aren't they, to um, also work with Kia to do other highways improvements works. And I think, isn't that happening at the moment, that um, uh, appointing of another contractor to that, do the big works that, that that's my understanding of it but we've been continuing to push on what's happening with some of those works that have been promised in the ward that we haven't seen happen yes um, so i i will need to be honest Karen, i'll need to go back into my my emails just to check where i got to with that because there was a bit of ping pong going on between ourselves and various officers within the council but uh, rest assured we are not going to let up on that one yeah uh, I don't know whether it would even be worse. Just, I mean, I'm, I know that we flagged up um, your road before, Karen, but um, perhaps John and I could send an email through uh, to the um, be cheeky and send it through to the cabinet member and see if there's any update on that particular road. So I know we know about. <laughs> so Karen, we'll promise to do that. All right. Uh, right now, I think this just leaves enough time, then, everybody. Um, for can you all be thinking of any further questions? <laughs> okay, thanks, Karen. Could, could yeah. I just flag up two bits, Marge? Yes, please. Yes, go on, John. On. 
So yep. ju just to just to let people know um, two things. First of all, uh, Network Rail have been out and about removing graffiti from some of their fixtures and fittings in the area. Um, they uh, removed a load of graffiti from the uh, railway bridge that goes over Cockrell's Lane over in the, uh, the western part of the ward. And I gather they've been looking at some of the other bridges and so on in the area as well. If there are any bits that have been missed, if you want to let me know and I'll pick that up uh, with Network Rail. But it is good to see them getting out the back and dealing with some of those uh, bits of graffiti that have been there for a while. Um, the other thing, just to remind everybody, is the as we start to return to normal, uh, our lovely local library at Glebe Farm uh, reopened for some services today. Uh, so that's uh, browsing and book selection and limited public computer access is now available. Obviously, they're having to do that in compliance with the COVID rules. So uh, you need to have your face masks on and observe the, the, the kind of social distancing and the, the hand washing and, and, and use of hand gels and so on. Uh, but they are now back up and running for some services and they're open uh, on a Wednesday from 9.30 to 12 and then from 2 to 4.30 on a Friday from 9.30 to 12 and then again from 2 to 4.30 and those same hours again on a Saturday. There's also a booking number if you want to book uh, for the computer. Um, that's 0121 464 4210. Um, I've also shared those details on our councillors' Facebook page as well. So um, uh, you can have, have a look at it there. And I think it's also on the Glebe Farm and Stetchford residents' Facebook page as well. Um, other services will start to reopen, I think, once we're a bit clearer on where we are with, with, with the COVID situation, including the surgery that I used to do up there on a Saturday morning. And I must admit, I'm quite looking forward to being able to sit in a room and talk to people face to face again. So we'll let you know as soon as that starts as well. Thanks, John. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, OK, now that leaves us then finally to everybody, if you can have a think, if there's any more questions that you want to ask, that would be great. Um, and also, I think, would it be helpful, Teresa, if you just said, I think we've got Teresa still here and um, who's been working hard down in Tarcross on getting things done there. Teresa, do you want to just... Give an update, particularly on those benches, because not everyone will know about those that you've got put in. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll come to that last. That's OK. Not <laughs> so, Thank you, um, just to remind everyone. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm Theresa Minnis and I'm the chair of the Tall Cross Residence Group. Um, I mentioned in the last board meeting that our main project um, for this year and actually started 18 months ago is the Tall Cross Island. Um, as some of you may be aware, we've had some sort of failures on the site there where we've had various trees planted that have not survived. Um, we've looked at various options. We looked at the idea of a structure, but we're not sure that, that the funding is going to be around to, to support that sort of kind of money. Um, so as you may have seen, we've got um, a heart shape on the roundabout at the moment, um, which is just made out of willow. Um, because of the failures that we've had with the planting um, over previous years, we're just now waiting for contractors to do some work on the roundabout just to see um, if they can dig into the foundations to find out what's going on there. Because our plan, hopefully, is to get another tree planted along with some landscaping and hopefully some better brickwork. Um, but until this is done, unfortunately, um, we're not being able to, to progress any further. Um, I think it is fair to say, sort of after a meeting I had with our team members, we are becoming a little bit um, really upset at, at the time it's taken to get this done. Um, but having said that, we've had a couple of um, members that we've been um, introduced to um, since before Christmas, which is... Marcus Balban of the Active Communities um, and James Carlos, who works for the council, um, and he is the Senior Development Planning Officer for East Birmingham. I'm confident now with their input, we may be able to go some way to getting this pushed along. Um, I had a walk, um, Councillor Bridal mentioned earlier on in the meeting that we had a walk around of the Tarcross um, area on Monday um, to look at our open spaces. Obviously, the, the island was, was the biggest focus, um, but we've also walked around the parks, the Tarcross Park, St. Peter's Park, 
um, just just so that they they've got an overview of the area and they can see the facilities that we have got with hopefully a view to doing something on those areas um, for the future. But obviously there's no no plans to do anything un until we've got this um, Tar Cross Island project um, up and running, really. Um, on a positive note, um, we've heard from the em exemplar, so they're the developers um, of the care home in Blackmore Croft. They're telling us now that that site is near enough completion so they're now ready to install the benches that they promised us um, sort, of, uh, sort of later last year. So hopefully within the next month or so, we will have um, four benches and a picnic table um, just put into the Tar Cross Park, which is going to be a great benefit for, for the people that are out on their, their daily exercise. Um, so that's a great positive and I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. So I think that's everything from me, Marge. You haven't got your mic on, Marge. God, I'll get the staff, can you? <laughs> um, I was going to say it's really helpful. Thanks very much. And I just really think, if you you know, think about it, none of this would have happened, Teresa, if it hadn't been for you and your group. You know, I think the fact that you've got together and put pressure on the powers that be, that's the way that, you know, you've got things done and the way that this company called Exemplar Building the Care Home have free of charge now, haven't they, put benches into the park and none of that would have happened if there hadn't been the group of residents. So I'd just say well done to you all. Fantastic. Thank Keep you. going. Yeah. Um, right. I don't think Lee Village and Kits Green Group are here. Uh, are they? Speak now. No. So, um, Catherine, from the Glebe Farm and Stetchford Residence Group, is there anything else that you'd like to add, Catherine? Um, I would just add that, um, yes, yeah, so there'll be the online meeting and I will send out details and put that on the Facebook page. We're also planning a litter pick from the library on yes. um, Thursday the 22nd of April. Details will go up on the Facebook page. Um, obviously, keeping to COVID restrictions, we need to go out in groups of six, but there can be more than six people that come and we'll separate people into groups. So that will be 10.30 until 11.30-ish, meeting at Glebe Farm Library. Um, and I think that we might head down towards the park and maybe just make sure that the park is uh, good and clean. Um, and... Um, a final thing is to say that I have been having lots of conversations, as I've already kind of hinted at, with the local council around the, the recreation ground. And there has now been a funding application submitted from the local council in um, partnership with us as the residents group based on the things that we were discussing before lockdown. Um, that funding application has gone in to um, apply for £75,000 of funding from HS2. So we will wait and see whether that's successful and I will make sure that there are updates. And I think finally, just to add in, that also during lockdown, um, a picnic bench and a notice board were ordered for the recreation ground. I know that they have been ordered, but there was some problem with them being installed because of COVID restrictions. I haven't yet heard any updates on that, but they are coming. Um, there will be a new notice board for the park, which will be another place for all of this community information to be displayed. Thank you, Catherine. That's really great. And again, I mean, John and I, I'm sure, would say well done to your group and to you for keeping going, because all of this is quite hard work um, and, you know, quite time consuming for people who are volunteers. But things pay off. And honestly, I mean, I don't think that before you got stuck in with that group, Catherine, there was that much happening around the Glebe Farm area. So I'd just say well done. I think things have started to move. Do you want to add anything, John? I will absolutely echo that. It was just a practical yeah. point. Um, yeah. Marilyn asked in the chat what time the litter pick started. I said 10.30 and then Pat said 10. So you just, you just clarify, Catherine, when it starts. <laughs> yes. Ah. 10.30. I've just popped it in the chat because I saw there was a, yes, I rattled Brilliant. it off too quickly. 10.30. Okay. 
Thank meet you. at Glebe Farm Library, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, meet at Glebe yeah. Farm Library. Just to say, all of the equipment will be provided. We've got little picker sticks and the bin bags and everything. If you do have your own gloves, that's helpful. If not, we do have some which we can offer to people. Okay, great. Right. Um, I think that's more or less it. Does anybody else have any other questions that they'd like to ask of me and John? Or uh, if the PC officer, police officer is still here, that they would like to ask and they've thought about to ask Catherine from the police. Anything else? Otherwise, Mark. yes. Brian again. Brian, yes. Keep going, um, Brian. Yeah, in Burlington Road, um, there was a care home. Um, uh, yes. I spoke to the lady who lives next door the other day and she said that the council, I don't know who they were, were going into this home um, to see um, what was going on. Do you or John know what's happening? Because there's obviously some Kirk concerns that he it may turn into, want of another word, a, a sort of um, a home for not not suitables. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um. Don't doesn't Brian mean Braymore Road? Do you mean Braymore Road? No, Burlington. Oh, Burlington. Just try. It. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Braymore. Braymore. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. I'm certainly not aware of any developments around Braymore uh, uh, along the lines you described, uh, Brian, but um, I will go away and make, make some inquiries just to be absolutely certain and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you and let you know what's happening, if, yeah. if anything is indeed happening. Yeah. I think everybody is wise to keep their eye on the kind of thing that Brian's talking about, where um, a house, um, sometimes a largish house or whatever, gets turned into um, a multi-occupied dwelling. Uh, there have been a number of problems across the city connected with this, with people who are living there not being given the proper care and support and indeed being drawn into all the wrong things. I bet PC Boriston could tell us a few stories about that. Um, and uh, the council is trying, the council's got an inspection team now, around these kinds of properties, Nick John, trying to mm. keep track of exactly where they're springing up in the city and um, trying to make sure that we don't get antisocial behaviour. Um, right, yes, Catherine just put something in the chat there, police officer, saying um, that there are people who are setting up their call, Brian, houses in multiple occupation. It's um, not just it's not just HMOs. It's actually something called exempt accommodation. Yes. Do you want um, to explain that, John? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's it's all a, a slightly complicated set of arrangements. Basically, what we've got is a situation where there isn't sufficient national regulation of um, these organisations that can set up these so-called exempt accommodation. They're supposed to be providing housing, we care and support, mm -hmm. and frequently what you find is they're not providing anything that we'd recognise as a adequate level of care and support and that obviously is bad for the vulnerable people concerned and also has an impact on the wider community frequently um, so we've been pushing really hard one to get the, the government to step up and legislate properly so we have all the levers that we need to 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 enforce and work with the police and others on that um, but and we've also secured some funding for a, a pilot project in Birmingham that's looking at what kind of regulations we might be able to put in place. And there is, as Marge has said, some additional inspection and enforcement that we're able to do through that uh, through that pilot. Um, I think what's got to happen here is that the, the government also needs to step up and properly regulate what's happening because it's a it's a national scandal and it's absolutely appalling that vulnerable people are being um, used in this way and not getting the support that they should be getting and the other, other people in the community that have to deal with the consequences. Well, that's right. And it's a serious problem and it seems to be all the way across the city. Um, but do keep your eyes open and uh, maybe Brian, John and I can have a look into, we know where you mean, um, just to yeah. see if we can get any uh, information about that. And I'll, I'll also make sure Teresa's included as, as requested in the chat as well. Great. OK, thank you, John. All right. 
Okay, um, unless anybody then has got anything else, I think we're coming to a conclusion here uh, and we can all go off and do something else. <laughs> I think this is about the right time for a meeting online. You don't want to go on forever, do you? So um, I'll just say thank you to everybody for coming uh, and um, watch out for our next one, which um, hopefully we'll set up fairly soon. Well, maybe not fairly soon, but maybe <laughs> later in the year. <laughs> we don't have too many of them uh, and um, don't forget what we really need are your ideas for spending this money what can you do in your local community with your fellow residents to um, make use of, of the money and celebrate um, towards the Commonwealth Games coming next year okay right I think we sign out John don't we <laughs> <laughs> Good, good to see everybody, albeit again through through the screen in my attic rather than in person. And uh, <laughs> stay safe for the meantime and hopefully see you all again soon and uh, in person. Yes. And thanks to our council officers for attending and to all our guests for coming along as well. Thanks very much. And thanks to all who participated. Right. See you soon then, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye Marge. Bye. Bye. Bye, Tom.